Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at species diversity, genetic diversity, ecosystem diversity, and then we'll finish with a summary. So, species tend to cluster in particular areas across the world. If all species spread out evenly across the world, there would be a lot more landmass occupied by life. But what we find is that actually species cluster into specific places. So different groups of organisms live in a specific habitat. And a habitat is defined as a place where an organism lives. So if we were just to take a few random examples, squirrels tend to live in particularly foresty areas like for the north of Canada or parts of Europe. Penguins are found normally in the Antarctic, so southern colder areas, and giraffes are mainly found in Africa. So with an organism, we can usually locate it to a specific place or specific places across the globe. And an individual species will tend to live in the same habitat wherever we can find it, because they tend to stay in the habitat because of the way they're adapted to it. So for example, a particular fish will normally be found in the rivers where it lives. Particular insects will be found on parts of the ground or under rocks. But you wouldn't find, for example, the insects in the river. So what do we mean, therefore, by a species? A species is a group of organisms capable of interbreeding to produce fertile offspring. So the way we can illustrate this is that if we take two frogs, the frogs are of the same species, which is the species of the frog. So if two frogs were to breed together, then they would healthily produce an organism which could be fertile. So this organism is fertile, and it will be of the same species as the frog. So this means that the frog is a species, and therefore these two organisms belong to the same species. But if we were to take two organisms from different species, like a frog and a worm, and combine their genetic material, then they would not produce fertile offspring, because the genetics just wouldn't work together, and this organism, even if it survived, would not be able to produce its own offspring. So the two organisms have to be part of the same species if they can produce fertile offspring. So this is how we classify organisms. And within an ecosystem, there will be a variety of different species coexisting in the same sort of habitats. And this forms an area's diversity. So for example, here we have the ecosystem of a desert. And the desert's ecosystem contains lots of different features the sand, the ground, certain levels of water, the air and the heat levels, all of the factors which make up that ecosystem. And within the ecosystem, we can see there's a variety of different species of plant and cacti. So essentially, the biodiversity is a measure of the variety of life in an area. So if we had a garden full of various different plants, insects and birds, the biodiversity would be quite high. But if we've got a patch of desert which only grows one particular species, then the biodiversity would be very low. So coral reefs found in the oceans and the rainforests of certain parts of the world are examples where the ecosystems have very high species diversity. So the rainforest is one ecosystem and within that ecosystem we've got lots of different habitats. We've got areas in or under bushes, we've got inside trees, we've got in the trees, on the ground, in between different plants, etc etc. So the biodiversity is very high because it happens to provide lots of habitats We've got varieties of plants and animals. Another ecosystem is the coral reef, where we've got coral growing on the rocks of the ocean, and we've got various fish and other animals living around there. So that's got a high biodiversity as well. So the species diversity refers to the number of species and the number of individuals in that species in a specified area. So you can imagine that if we have more species and there's more organisms in each species, then the diversity of the species is greater. So that's what species diversity is referring to. If we had a patch of woodland in England which had a few different types of tree and a few rodents, then the species diversity would be a lot less if we had a whole rainforest in South America covered in various different plants, insects, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and some mammals as well. There's more different species, and each species probably has more numbers in it. That's how we define the species diversity. So when you're thinking of diversity, think about how you can make it as varied as possible. Another term that you need to be aware of is genetic diversity. So even within one species, we can have organisms that have genetic diversity. So individuals within a species are genetically quite similar, and this allows them to produce fertile offspring. So we said before that a species has to have organisms which can breed together to make fertile offspring. So two frogs coming together of the same species will make a frog as an offspring, which is fertile and can go and produce others. If they were two different species, this might produce an organism, and if it does, it wouldn't be fertile. So they have to be genetically similar to a point where their genes can combine to make a new frog. 
but you can still see diversity in the species as well. So even within a species, small genetic differences can have relatively large effects on the phenotype of an organism. So if we were to take the species of the dog, we know that dogs come in lots of different shapes, sizes, colours and have various features. They're still the same species because they can breed together to produce fertile offspring, i.e. they can make new dogs which are fertile. But within the dog species we have different dogs with different genetics, different genes, for example some are bigger, some are smaller, some are black, brown, white. It's lots of variety in the species itself. So there's small genetic differences but they can have large effects on the phenotype and the phenotype is the physical appearance based on genes. And as a general rule, a population, or for example a group of organisms in a species, tend to be healthier if they have a high genetic diversity compared to a population which is highly inbred with a low genetic diversity. So for example, for humans, if there's a large population and a large genetic diversity, this is healthier, as opposed to a particular area where there is inbreeding going on, the genetic diversity goes down and the genetics are very similar to each other and this is less healthy and we can define genetic diversity as a measure of all of the genes possessed by the individuals in a population or a whole species so a population is a group of organisms of a species type or we can just talk about the whole species wherever they are so a high genetic diversity will mean there's more of a mixture of genes for a species but if there's a low genetic diversity there's a lot less and then finally we can talk about ecosystem diversity. So remember an ecosystem is an area or a particular place where there's various different habitats containing different species of life. So a habitat is usually quite small. So examples of habitats might be under a rock or within grass or it could be inside a river or a pond or it could even just be inside one tree or in the bark of a tree. But the point of an ecosystem is that it contains lots of different habitats. So there's lots of opportunities for life to survive. So in the rainforest, as we said earlier, we've got inside the plants, in the bark of trees, in between the trees, on the ground, and in the tree branches too. And at the coast, we've got in the plants of the sand dune, in the water, the sand, different levels of the sand's moisture, etc. And when we're talking about genetic diversity and species diversity, usually we're measuring small areas, like the cacti of an area of desert. But if we wanted to measure a larger area, for example a region of a country, or even a whole country, we have to look at the diversity of ecosystems, so the ecosystem diversity of the area, because otherwise it would be too many places to look at. So the ecosystem diversity is a measure of the range of habitats on a range of scales from a small ecosystem to the whole world. So if we were looking at, for example, the UK, and we could look at the ecosystem diversity, we would find that there are various forests, we would also see that there are coastline habitats, there are various marshlands and rivers, and we also have urban areas as well. So the ecosystem diversity is looking at how many different types of ecosystem there are in a region, and therefore the diversity of life inside those as well. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Snap Revise smiley face and together let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.